Joining me this morning, we have Ms. Ida LeBlanc. She's from the National Union of Domestic Workers. Good morning. Domestic employees. The domestic employees, yes, yes it is. Yes, nude. Nude. How are you this morning? I'm fine this morning. I know there's good. a lot of bad weather this morning. Yes, yes, but the, the weather, um, it suits me fine once I could get her wrong. Yeah. And I had to be here this morning because <laughs> um, we made previous engagements I know, and I don't want I you know. to feel I'm trying to slight anybody. <laughs> I have to be here because I'm a comrade too. Yeah, Miss Levon, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I work, um, you could call it voluntary work. Right. within the organization, the right. National Union of Domestic Employees. Mm -hmm. And my mother started this organization together with James Lynch, um, deceased James Lynch, mm -hmm. who was a veteran trade unionist, and okay. another woman named Shalisha Ali. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, Marlene Orr. And all this happened in the kitchen of OWTU. Really? Right. So every Saturday I would go there and even get to use a little office right. um, on the side to learn to type and things like that. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, the trade union really brought me to what I am here today. Yes. So I have to give back. I want to ensure that the domestic workers mm -hmm. are recognized in law and practice, mm -hmm. you know, because so many things happen to domestic workers. That's you true. know, the amount of discrimination they have to, they meet out daily. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't just sit back and do nothing mm -hmm. because my mother, Clotilde Walcott, she has done a lot for domestic workers. She has built a foundation for us. Yes. She has gotten recognition for us internationally, not mm -hmm. me. I just follow up on what she did, yeah. you know, and I was able to get connections all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, with regards to domestic mm -hmm. and we, we also represent the interests of low-income workers. We, we, we try to help and protect those who are vulnerable in society, yeah. the disadvantaged workers, workers who cannot go and seek recognition within a union because they are so easy to be fired and replaced. Mm -hmm. So we took on that job. It's a hard job. It's a challenging job. I enjoy it. You know, sometimes I, know. I cry, sometimes I laugh. <laughs> that is good. So, that is my mission, you know? I want to see domestic workers brought up in line as all other workers. Mm -hmm. And that was, is what we fought for in Geneva mm -hmm. for many years. Mm -hmm. We went there in consultation. I was invited by the ILO to come there and be consulted right. on domestic workers. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a whole federation of domestic workers all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that time when we were invited, it was about five or six people who were running domestic workers organization around the world. Mm -hmm. Now we have many, hundreds of domestic workers union has been formed since the ILO brought on this convention 189. Right. So I have been in the forefront, Nude has been in the forefront because it's not only myself that went to Geneva, we had other members right. go in, you know, we had domestic workers involved in international issues. Mm -hmm. It was so great. So that being in the forefront of something like that and then your government not ratifying the Convention 189, you really feel bad. Because we have Jamaica, mm -hmm. they have ratified the Convention first in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. followed by Guyana and now Grenada. And what happened to Trinidad and Tobago when all these Caribbean islands really look up to us when it comes to industrial relations and yeah. issues of labor, you know? So we, well, the, the minister in, in our, in our um, workshop on Saturday that I we know, had. I know, because I saw it. It was the really law, nice. The legacy and our, on the road to recognition. Mm -hmm. That is what we are pursuing now. And she has promised us that Labor Something minister. will be done. The Labor Minister, The right? Labor Minister, yes. Something, Something will be done by 2019. Now, I have worked a lot, the union it mm -hmm. is, and we have also not only involved with the ILO, but we also involved with human rights organization across the globe. Okay. I'm also a member of a steering committee for women, mm -hmm. the women, over 58 women's organization, mm -hmm. 
and we sit five five women sit from around the world mm -hmm. and and come up with um, strategies on how we could work together because it's not only in Trinidad and Tobago we are being oppressed yeah it's all over the world yes, you true. know so we have to come together to do something mm -hmm. and we want to do something collective and what we are now talking about is a global strike mm -hmm. on International Women's Day mm -hmm. you know we want women to put on the broom the mop don't go to the office and we will be starting a campaign now just um, nationally we'll be talking about it more often okay. as, it, as the time goes around okay. right because in Iceland years ago the woman put down the brooms they didn't do no housework and the economy stopped nobody couldn't go to work because without that work no other work could take place That's because true. if you come into this office and the place is dirty you, 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 you you know your mindset and all like you cannot work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing cannot happen with all this domestic work so the the watch just work like it has no value you know and and it doesn't make sense but with all this work as i said nothing can happen and and it's because why they treat us like that it's because the same work we do in the house for no pay unpaid work mm -hmm. you know we re, we reproduce um, society you know we take care of people we nurture the future generation and yet they watch us like we're doing nothing this work has no value yeah. how come this work has no value but you see what happened now we have to go out there now and bring about the awareness in the public mm -hmm. not only the domestic workers but the public at large we want the support from the public you know, because this work that we do in the home, that people watch it as it has no value. We're cooking, we're cleaning, we're doing all this work. And the nights are tired. Yeah. You know? And, and people must value that work. And it's because of that work, because we do it in the home for free, that they want to pay little for it when we have to do it for somebody else. I know the um, Labour Minister, Jennifer Bittes Primer, said she's going to help you before the end of the year. Yes. Do you think that's going to... Well, it's up to the union too. We have to keep advocating. Right. If we just remain and say, all right, the minister will do it at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will happen. Mm -hmm. But we have to keep in, have some visibility mm -hmm. and let people know, let the public know, because the public is a big actor in all this. Yes. And the public must know what we are going through. You know, because CEDAW, the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, mm -hmm. in 2016 knew it was in Geneva because they had was to monitor government and ask government what they have done for the women in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were, we insisted that we had was to be there. And we also were mentioned in the shadow report because government will give a report to CEDAW saying this is what we did for women. And then we will give a shadow report right. to say this is what's happening so that these people could see the true picture of what's really going on. And we will be there. We were there. I was able to lobby amongst all those human rights activists mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. who have to do the CEDAW committee we had a lunch session with the CEDAW committee where we had was um, I had was a throughout the work of the union and why it was so important to get recognition. And it was good because they made a recommendation to government, they call on government. You need to amend that IRA to include the domestic workers so that they could be brought up in line as all other workers. Yeah. You know? And and they even went further to ask government when that will be implemented. So that we, um, I was consulted by government. We had a whole consultation with the women mm -hmm. under the Ministry of Gender Affairs, you know, and we, we went through CEDAW committee um, recommendations and things like that. So that the government is saying now we will do that by 2019. Okay. So that our organization now mm -hmm. has to step up. We have to keep reminding them that you made a commitment to do this by the end of 2019, you know? And, and what's so good about it is that we have 
a member at Trinidadian on that CEDAW committee, mm -hmm. Dr. Ruda Radak. I wanted to ask you a question, Ms. Ida, about some of the exploitations faced by domestic workers. You can give some examples of those. Well, one of the exploitations faced by domestic workers is that, what, what I must say, the, the, the worst part is that you could be fired for anything. Okay. And you have no recourse. So, for example, another thing that happened, like, you will hire me. Mm -hmm. And next thing, I am working not only for you, but I'm working for your sister, your cousin, your mother, mm -hmm. and all these different people I am working for. Yes. You know? So that if it is that something happened and I was fired, and even self, if I could relate it to the minimum wage, because that is the only how you could get redressed mm -hmm. if there is a violation of the minimum wage, meaning that they didn't pay you the correct wages, or they didn't give you, you wasn't able to take your sick leave, and or, or um, even self if you got pregnant, because we are also covered under the Maternity Protection Act. But most of the time, domestic workers, it's not about that. It's about you didn't pay the NIS. Yes, I was just going to ask you about that. So the when, when they go case. to the national insurance and you didn't, um, they didn't register you, they didn't pay a cent, mm -hmm. and you're seeking, or because you're studying when every six years, what will happen to you? You want a pension. Because after 60, a domestic worker is so tired. This is laborious work. People feel this work is nothing because we do it yeah. in the home. But it's, it's tiring work because most of these domestic workers, when they reach home, they can't do the work. That's true. And so they're seeing about your children true. and their children going astray. So that is the situation domestic workers find themselves in. So even self, um, they went and reported to the NIS that they wasn't paying the NIS. Remember, the NIS had to call the employer in yes. to verify mm -hmm. this claim. And when they call the employer now, that is where the confusion starts. Because one instance I had where the domestic worker was working 16 years, and when the NIS called, the employer wanted her to say six years. And she said, no, I can't do that. I'm not lying on my own self. Now, with her workers, will do it. You know, and mm -hmm. then come to the union to tell the union what happened when, they, in fact, they should stand up to the employer. I mean, to say we are all human beings, right? And when they get fired for that, you can't seek no recourse, eh? Because you're not a worker. Wow. So that is our big problem. A, a domestic worker said she was in a house going to do domestic work in one of these upscale mm -hmm. um, community. And a bandit was around, pushed the door as she go in. It. And she was robbed, had her on the ground, and the employers run upstairs and lock up their cell. They call the police and lock up their cell. The bandit couldn't get in where they were. And then the worker couldn't go back there. But if it was another worker, mm -hmm. you might have been able to um, cite constructive dismissal or something to ensure that you get compensation for the years of service. Because this worker worked 16 years doing this domestic work. Do you think domestic workers feel a sort of embarrassed by what they do and, you know, with the fact that they work in these high-end places, do you feel? Right, yes, some of them, not all. Do they feel that type of way, though? Not all, not okay. all, but the majority, apparently, because these domestic workers, they're ashamed to say they're doing domestic work, okay. you know? And because, they, you know, a long time they used to call them servant. Yes. Right, you're doing servant work, I want to get a servant. Mm -hmm. So that stigma is still there. This colonial mentality we have, it mm -hmm. hasn't gone, it's still there. And even the way the employers look down on them, mm -hmm. you know, so they don't want nobody to know that they're doing that work, but they have those who are proud because it have domestic workers, employers who pay the domestic, very um, generous. Right. You understand? Because they understand. But it's, and they are human beings, but not mm -hmm. everybody is a human being. Even though we walk in and you're thinking you're a human being, you could be so evil. Yeah, for persons who have been working, you know, for like a lot of years, is there any sort of way the union could help to educate them more to, you know, bring them to another level? 
Is well, there anything have, you have implemented for them? We have been always doing that with regards to training mm -hmm. and things like that. We even went so far to be involved with the National Training Agency some years ago okay. and we developed standards for domestic workers okay. because we wanted domestic workers to go and get be certified. Mm -hmm. You know, and not only that, we had the CSME, mm -hmm. Caribbean Single Market Economy, who says that domestic workers can move freely. So we took that on board and we worked with CPDC, the Caribbean Policy Development Center, yes. saying that um, making CSME work for domestic workers. So that is why we went um, and worked with the NTA, did all this work to do the standards and things like that. Mm -hmm. We were going to be assessors. But then government changed and everything changed. We were thrown in the bamboo, we were not hearing. So we said no. Let's start back our work again. Let's get back on the board So you're again. saying with previous and, government. And we too. want to know what is happening now with this, um, the standards that we develop. We want to know how domestic workers will get certified. Because we are hearing that the open campus has domestic workers right. certifying them. Why are you leaving out new? We're supposed to be in the forefront in these things. So you're Why saying... The choosing people to do these things and leaving us out. Yeah, so with the former gov government, you were more seen and heard in the public domain. Yes, 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 yes. And you see, all that causes problem. Mm -hmm. Because if people find you, you know, people tell you they want to direct you who to talk to and yeah. who to move with. Mm -hmm. But you see, our job, every government come in place is them we have to move with. Yes. Because it's them we have to call on mm -hmm. to do things for workers. And people must remember that I'm not only a trade unionist, but I'm a human rights activist. Yes. You know, so I don't have to pick no side. Who there is who have to be accountable to us. Mm -hmm. So I can't go all over the place asking people, I have to deal with this government now. Yes. So every time a government change, sometimes we go backward. Because when a new person come in place, they want to change everything. They want to do things their way instead of, instead of follow up mm -hmm. and let us move forward. It doesn't happen. So all these things are challenges mm -hmm. and we, we work together and we will work it through. Yes. Ms. Ida, I definitely want to bring you back to our program, mm -hmm. you know, to just highlight more with nude and stuff like that, to bring more traction to people who is not aware of nude. Yes, you know? yes. So I want to thank you and ask you for your closing comment. Well, um, all I want to see is that domestic workers mm -hmm. and low-income workers, because the low-income workers are no different. Yes. They face the same um, obstacles in the workplace and oppression. You need to stand up. Stand up. And, and make your voices be heard, you know? Because what they will do you, they will fire you. And really, in the end, when you work hard so under these terrible conditions, you, you, when you watch at people, when they reach 60, they mash up, you know? True. So it, it, it interferes with your health too. So like yourself and stand up for your rights. And a lot of them believe in churches and God. God, is, God will help you. God is the way. Don't speak about God and you don't believe. You must believe that he will help us Very because nice. we are the oppressor. You right? So don't be afraid. Be brave and come out. Speak out. Stand up for your rights. Yes. Thank you so much. That was Miss Ida LeBlanc from NUD, which is the National Union of Domestic Employees. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to welcome you, going to bring you back on set with us, you know, anytime because PSA have opened up a platform for everyone, yes, not just thank about you very labor. Much. Yes. yes. So we have come to the end of today's program here on Iron Labor. We're going to toss the news and we're going to see you next week. Thank you so much. I'm Avalon Williams. Mm -hmm.